Today I'm going to show you step by step how I draw faces. But first, a quick disclaimer, I don't think the way I'm about to show you is the only way or that it's better than any other way of drawing faces. With art, there's really no wrong way and being creative isn't a formula. Being willing to try and learn new things is the most important part. People also learn in different ways, so the way that I show it and explain it might not be the way that's most helpful for you. In terms of technicalness, I think this video is probably going to be somewhere in the middle, meaning there won't be tons of measurements and diagrams, but it also won't be completely disorganized either. I had originally been planning a much more in-depth video about this topic, but I found it very overwhelming to try and put it all together, so instead I'm breaking it down into several smaller videos. This video is an explanation of the basic steps that I use for drawing at my current skill level, but I hope that regardless of your skill level, you'll find it helpful in some way. The first thing I do when I want to draw a person is find an image similar to the pose that I want. For this tutorial, I wanted to draw someone at a three-quarter angle, showing mainly the left side of their face. This image of Lena Headey I thought was perfect, it's very pretty, um, but I'm not going to draw it to look exactly like her. It's good to use a reference, at least to see how things are proportioned um, from the angle that you want to draw from. References definitely aren't just for beginners, but depending on your style, you might rely on it in different amounts. Since I lean towards realism, I use references pretty regularly. First, decide where you want your head to be by lightly drawing a circle on the page. This is important if you plan to have other elements in your image that also need to fit on the page, like hairstyles or background elements, things like that. The circle isn't the face or even the whole head, it's actually the skull. Keeping in mind that you're drawing a three-dimensional head and not just a face is very important. The next thing I do is add the light outline of a jawbone onto the lower half of my circle. And where the chin ends up determines the direction that your face is looking. The next thing we do is draw a kind of rounded vertical line from the chin up to the top of the head to decide where the center of the face will be. And then another line is drawn horizontally right between the base of the chin and the top of the head. And like I said, be sure to draw them lightly because we're going to draw over them and eventually erase them. They don't have to be perfect lines, it's just good to have a guideline. My reference doesn't have an ear showing, but just for your sake, um, the ear would usually fall right about in the center of this horizontal line. At this point, you'll start to determine where each feature lands on the face and the distance between them, which is just as important as the size and shape of the features themselves. So that horizontal line that we drew across the face is the eye line. If you were to measure the top of your head down to the chin and then find the center point between that, that's where your eyes will sit, usually. I think that's a good rule of thumb to follow, but I do have an issue when art teachers start to say that you have to follow a very specific um, kind of measurement for every single face that you draw. Typically, your beginning art class will show you diagrams like this, where the face is measured out by very specific proportions and everything always has to line up, but I don't think that's always the case and to be honest I find it kind of creepy. It plays into the idea that there's only one type of attractive face and I really don't like that. And I think the reason that I think this is because I actually worked as a caricature artist for a while and we intentionally exaggerate people's features and the spaces between them in order to achieve likeness, which really goes against that whole perfect diagram of the face idea, and for art in general, drawing a perfect person wouldn't really be interesting anyway. So I say learn the basic proportions and the diagrams, but then be able to look at your reference and see how it might vary from those average face diagrams and find what's unique and beautiful about that face specifically. Maybe one eye is higher or bigger, maybe the lips aren't perfectly symmetrical. It's all part of the fun of drawing and part of the challenge. Okay, art class rant is over. And like I said at the beginning, this is just my opinion on 
how I draw faces and just how I approach it. So, hey, if the diagrams work for you, awesome. Do, do what works for you, 100%. At this point in the drawing, I'm just establishing where each feature goes and kind of the general shape. And there's two ways you can approach this. You can either focus on one feature at a time or do a little of each one and build up the detail slowly, which is what I recommend, but I don't always do, um, just because I might be having a good time working on one specific feature. The danger of perfecting one feature at a time is that if you realize something is off halfway through, it's more work to fix it and you'll be sad about having to erase all of your hard work. So be aware of that and be willing to make adjustments before it's too late. Don't commit to having a semi-good drawing if you catch something off and have the opportunity to change it early on. One good way to check your image for mistakes is to look at it in reverse. So if you're drawing traditionally, you can hold your paper up to the light and look at it from the back. And if you're drawing digitally, you can usually flip or reverse the image. And this way you can kind of see if anything is dramatically off balance. Another good way to catch your mistakes is to take a break from drawing the face now and then to start adding other details like the hair or background elements, or get up and take a break altogether. Sometimes when you come back to your drawing later, you'll see it differently, and that can be a good thing. Once you're happy with the general location of your features and how things are kind of falling into place, then you can start locking in your details. It's important to not go into autopilot at this point and just start drawing what you think an eye looks like or a nose or a mouth, because then you'll start to draw kind of a generic mannequin-ish looking eye, nose or mouth, and we don't want that, we want it to look unique and like our reference, especially if you're trying to draw a specific person. And I would say this is different from having a style. You can definitely have a style of drawing that's a specific kind of way, um, and this might not apply to that, so take it with a grain of salt, of course. But like I was saying, if your style is closer to realism, then you're definitely going to want to go off of your reference. So the way to do this is to look closely at the part of your reference that you want to draw and break it down into very specific shapes. Obviously the iris is a circle, it usually is. Here some of it is obstructed, but typically we know it's a circle. Next is the tear duct, which I usually think of as a triangle or a small circle. The whites of the eyes will outline the general shape of the rest of the eye and are typically triangular or rectangular. And then finally the eyelids, which kind of show the roundness of the eye. Some eyes will have them and some eyes will not and they will vary in size and shape. To break this down even further, here we have the spherical eyeball with the iris and pupil, which are also round. The eye is a spherical shape which sits inside of the eye socket and is held in place by eyelids that open and close in a kind of oblong almondish shape that varies depending on expression and that person's natural features. Of course, you don't need to do this whole process of drawing the entire eyeball every time you draw an eye. It's just something to think about when you're thinking about the shape and how the eye sits inside of the face rather than just being a flat thing that's on the face like a mask. And again, a lot of it will come down to your reference. Here we have downturned eyes, upturned eyes, young eyes, and old eyes. There's so many variations and so many different ways that they can be drawn, so definitely use a reference. The nose is another feature where it's critical to think three-dimensionally because it typically protrudes away from the face in varying degrees and you need to find some way to show that. So once again, we're going to look at our reference and break it down into very basic shapes. It looks like the main portion of her nose is circular, so we can draw it as a circle, but for some people it might be more rectangular or even triangular depending on the size and shape of the nose. Next, we've got the area around the nostril, which is typically circular, but could be taller or flatter depending on the shape. And then we have the nostril itself, which I usually depict as a kind of C shape. 
And the thing to notice here is that the shadow inside the nose is a gradient. It's not just a black hole in the middle of the face. And then the rest of the nose could be seen as these kind of geometric box shapes. If the nose is very long or downturned, you often won't see much nostril at all. And if it's upturned, you'll often see a lot more nostril. Um, it all kind of varies depending on the angle that you choose to draw as well, so that can, that can have a lot to do with it. There's so many variables with how to draw the different features of the face and how each thing connects to um, the different poses and things like that, so I could definitely see myself making more videos about these topics, so if you have any specific questions, be sure to let me know in the comments so I can address them in future videos. With the mouth, you would do the exact same thing. Go to your reference and break it down into various shapes. Um, I'm not going to do that for this video just because it's starting to get long. If I've done my job, then your brain is already starting to see those shapes in what I'm drawing. And hopefully you're starting to understand what I mean by breaking things down into shapes rather than thinking of them as a whole. Like I said, I do want to make more videos going into more detail about each of these topics, so that could be something to look forward to as well. In this same vein, I recently did a video about how to draw teeth, so if you're working on your mouths and you struggle with teeth, definitely check that out. I'll link it down below or in the corner. The amount of detail that you want to add is completely up to you. Some people like that hyper-realistic look and some like a more simple look and both of those are great um, do whatever you want you don't have to copy every feature either you can you know maybe you just want to do the eyes and you want to pick a different mouth that's totally fine um, mainly the reference is for the pose and the direction of the features and like i said before if you have a particular style that you do obviously you'll use even less of the reference probably and instead put in your own eye shape or nose shape, like if you draw anime for example, you know, you use that little pointy nose instead of the round nose. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. Like I said at the beginning, I originally wanted to make a much more in-depth video, but that just uh, was too unrealistic, so I definitely plan to make more videos going into more detail about all of this, so leave me comments and let me know what you want to know about. Um, I really hope this was helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.